Well, after a couple of months of a lot of talk about variant Qurans, variances in Quran manuscripts, you may be wondering, are there similarities among Quran manuscripts at all? If this is a question that you've had, stick around. We'll talk about it today. Well, welcome back to Variant Quran. I'm Dr. Daniel Brubaker. It's great to have you here. And I'm going to run through this video in a single shot without making very many edits at the request of you, my viewers, who um, wanted to uh, have a more smooth and natural presentation. So we're going to give it a go. Uh, you're going to have to put up with some of my pauses and things like that throughout the video. So I hope you don't mind, and uh, we'll see in your comments how you like that as well. I have tried to cut out spaces and uh, so forth in order to uh, shorten the videos to not waste your time in previous ones. So, but we'll just do this one very naturally and it's not going to be a very long video. So, um, this should be just fine. All right. So today I want to answer one single question uh, that came up in my last video from a viewer. And it was uh, Khadija Mutawakil who says, Hi, sir. It's a good thing to learn about Quran. You always show us the differences between old manuscripts and the Quran that we have today. Can you show us the similarities too? Thank you. And this is a great question because I understand that this material is new for many of you, and it is a sort of a hot topic of discussion and so forth. But you all have not had, many of you have not had the experience of looking through the manuscripts and having a, an understanding and a perspective of how, uh, what the density of these corrections are in the Quran manuscripts. And, you know, obviously the flip side of, of uh, differences and variants and so forth is uh, the degree of similarity. So I want to spend a little bit of time on that today and I haven't developed out a, you know, a full presentation for you, but I, I, I will offer some comments and show you at least one resource that I found recently that is interesting, although I haven't had a chance fully to review it and assess it, there are some uh, things about it that, that I want you to make you aware of as well. But, okay, so the, the first um, answer that I'm going to give to that uh, question about similarities between the Quran manuscripts, particularly the old Quran manuscripts, which is what I'm talking about, is that by and large, they are very similar. There are differences in uh, orthography that we see coming down through particularly the first couple centuries as the orthography is being solidified. And by orthography, by the way, I realize that I'm speaking in jargon. We're talking about some changes in the way that the words were written over time, particularly, for example, um, the Arabic words involving the writing or not writing of some of the long vowels that are included sometimes in the middle of a word or things like that. And it wasn't that these words were pronounced differently. It, it, it was not necessarily that it changed the word itself. It was just that the way the word pronounced was actually written down on the page came to be changed. The, um, the conventions for doing that changed over time. And so they came to be written differently in the manuscripts. So this is not necessarily something that is, it's a, it's a certain category of variant and a certain category of correction when they are indeed corrected that uh, we want to take into consideration. So um, by and large, the manuscripts are quite, uh, quite similar. And when I'm talking about corrections, obviously I went and I looked through these manuscript pages looking for things where there was an obvious something had been done on the page to correct the manuscript. And so I've pulled all those out. And obviously when you're looking at something, when you have your focus on a particular topic or a thing, uh, in an aspect of something, then that suddenly comes into sharp focus and it becomes the main, um, it's sometimes it's, a, I won't say it's all that you see, but it's something that, that really uh, grows out of proportion in your view because it's really what you're focusing on. But uh, there's a, there's a context and a perspective in which this exists. And that context is the entire Quran manuscript and the entire body of Quran manuscripts. And so, um, as I ha may have said before, I find it, and I think I, I believe I did say it in my book, uh, Corrections in Early Quran Manuscripts. I should hold that up for you again so that... <clears throat> there you go. So 
please. Uh, if you haven't got a copy of the book, it's very reasonably priced on Amazon, and you can go pick that up anytime you like. And um, translations, by the way, coming in French and German, at least as I understand it, being worked on. So you, uh, if you speak French or German, that I look forward to that. Um, so uh, as I have mentioned in there, is that it's unusual for me to go through, it's unusual to go through, in my experience, more than a few pages, sometimes less than that, but more than a few pages of an early Quran manuscript and not find some sort of correction or variant, and often the density is more than that. So there are pages that don't have any variants at all, and uh, there are also variants that are orthographic and therefore not really significant in uh, some of the more interesting ways that we might be thinking of. And yeah, so uh, so that, that just gives you an idea of the density of the, of the corrections. Now, most of the time also, I've found that the corrections tend to bring the Quran manuscript toward conformity with the text that is used today, which is based upon earlier um, an earlier tradition. Obviously, it's uh, the text of 1924 was rooted in older traditions in uh, in certain ways, and they made great efforts to to make that um, representative of a very early text type, a very early um, uh, very early text. So. Uh, but that's that's been the trend that I've seen in the manuscripts. Now, that uh, you have an idea now of the density. Every few pages of an early Quran manuscript, there's something going on that's uh, that's interesting that I find interesting that I've noted uh, some correction. And of those many corrections, then a certain subset of those will be something that is perhaps more interesting, perhaps a um, not a mistake, or perhaps yeah, just just something different from a. An orthographic or just a pure mistake kind of kind of change in my judgment. Now, obviously, we're talking about my assessment of these things, uh, which is changing over time. And as you look very closely at something, sometimes more um, details emerge to your attention, or you become aware of some explanation for this that you had not seen before. And so this happens all the time, and this will be happening, I'm sure, throughout my life of doing this kind of research. So I wanted to bring to you, and just in conclusion of this very short video, uh, with something that's relevant to the question that was asked, and that is a book that came to my attention only recently by uh, um, Al-Azami, and it's called Ageless Quran, Timeless Text, or in the Arabic on the back side there, you can see that if you're an Arabic speaker. And um, this book is kind of a nice little project. I had been aware of Mr. Azami's earlier work, but what he has done here is to take um, 16 different early, well not early, 16 different Quran manuscripts, and he's taken Surah 17 and traced them down and shown the text throughout the entire, uh, in the, through the entire Surah. This surah is attested in all of these manuscripts, not the entire surah in a couple of the manuscripts. The sauna one is, is not attested. Only part of the surah is attested. So <clears throat> what he has done, and I'm just going to show you uh, without going showing you too much detail, what he's done is he's lined up these things on the page, the different, the different manuscripts, and starting with the early, they're in rough chronological order. And so he's taken the the text, the the top two are the text according to the traditional accounts of what the text should be, and then the ones below it are the uh, examples from the manuscripts. Now, he's done something to, <clears throat> I'm not sure quite how this was accomplished, but as you can see, the, the text is spaced out so that everything lines up perfectly down here. And in order to do that, he's had to do something with the you know, this is not, this spacing is not the way that they're spaced in the manuscript themselves. So it looks like a manuscript page on the background, but, you know, for example, this, this long space down here doesn't exist in that, in that manuscript, so, but it's been stretched out in order to, the space has been stretched out in order to make it easier for the reader to look and see what is, and you know, what corresponds with what in these manuscripts. 
So, and there is material at the front and the back <clears throat> of this book uh, that uh, an introduction and there are charts and graphs that lay out some of the, some of the uh, um, details about his analysis and comparison of these various ones. So I have not yet had a chance to look through and to make a thorough assessment of the text of this. Uh, because it would take going through line by line of, of each one. And I am aware of a couple of places where there are some small variations in these manuscripts that were chosen. But these 16 manuscripts were, and they come, and the, the lower ones on that page are more modern. Only the first, only the first, well, I mean, it, the first half are somewhat early, and, and the first uh, the first one only is, uh, let's see, yeah, so from the first couple of centuries are maybe the first half dozen of, of these, and then the others go in across, across the centuries and into mm, probably more modern, yeah, certainly more modern um, um, productions of Quran manuscripts. And so, and so I haven't gone through these line by line. I'm aware of a couple of places where there are some small variations uh, in it, but uh, they've chosen, he's chosen a selection of Quran manuscripts in order to show, in this case, the, um, the uh, consistency and the persistence. I believe that's the sort of the purpose of this project is to give a sense of the persistence of the Quranic text across these manuscripts. And it's very helpful to have something like that and to um, and to see that and get that perspective. So when I talk about variations or um, corrections in Quran manuscripts, I'm not talking about the entire body of every single manuscript or every single text. And so I mentioned in my last video that I have found a place where there are four different manuscripts that have corrections across this single spot. <clears throat> so that's four manuscripts out of hundreds probably of manuscripts that may have that attested. Uh, maybe not that many in the very early stage, but over a number of manuscripts that have, uh, certainly not in the very early years, um, that have that passage attested, that have it present in the manuscript, there is an erasure that's overwritten at that, uh, at that point. And I was actually mistaken when I, uh, when I told you that it was four. Um, it's actually five. Uh, not actually, there are five in that narrow spot. So what I'll do is I'll talk to you about that uh, so far, and I'm, I'm looking at uh, looking at others too, but this is what has come to my attention so far. All right, so that to say there are narrow places in the Quran. The uh, corrections are not also evenly spread across every uh, part of the Quran, every surah, and so I started making notations throughout my doctoral period in a... Um, of where these corrections were and started, you know, sort of drawing lines around the, the parts that are corrected so that I would start to understand the density and where the location of these corrections w was. And uh, so that helped me to, to recognize that they're not evenly dispersed across the text of the Quran, which is also interesting in itself. So, um, yes, so there are many, many similarities and the text of the Quran, it's not as though the entire text is just covered with corrections in every every part of it but there are corrections in different various manuscripts. And some of these corrections correspond with corrections in other manuscripts. So this raises the possibility of, well, either families of manuscripts, which is being studied as well, because when you have a text transmitted and maybe there's a, um, a variation in one manuscript that becomes the um, model for the production of other manuscripts. And so the ones downstream from that will have and carry the same variation in it. And this helps you determine a text family, just like a family tree sort of branches out. And that would be what would be going on in some of these manuscripts. So there we go. I think I've talked longer than I expected to already in this one, in this single take video that I wanted to do. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I have some more questions that I'll answer in a subsequent uh, video. And we're going to get into back into some actual new manuscript material at some point very soon as well. So thank you for watching. And we'll talk again soon. Also, if you would consider 
supporting the work that I do. I am doing this with your help, which enables me to go and spend my time and effort and uh, get the resources I need. There's a Patreon link at the bottom, and I'm working on other things that some of you have requested through Subscribestar and PayPal. So thank you very much. And uh, something that doesn't uh, cost you anything is to like this video and to subscribe to it so that you get notifications. And if you want notifications of every single video that comes out, uh, please, after you've subscribed, click the little bell and it will send you notifications for every video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye.